Hi, I'm Eunice. You're listening to Grammar Matters, a series of podcast episodes from the English Language Institute of Singapore. Grammar Matters aims to help listeners become more aware of areas of English language use in Singapore which do not follow standard English conventions and which may be confusing to other speakers of the language. Hello, I'm Paul Doyle and this is Grammar Matters. In this episode, we're going to focus on transitive and intransitive verbs. Let's begin by listening to Cindy asking her friend Mabel about her cruise holiday. Hello, Mabel. How was the cruise? Did you enjoy? Yes, we had a good time on the cruise. Thank you. Good for you. Did your husband and son like? Yes, we all loved it. The food was great. Cabins were comfortable. Yes, it was fun. We met some interesting people there too. And my son made some new friends. Well, how is the family? We are all right. But I'm worried about my aunt. She's in hospital. Why? What happened? Well, she was crossing the road near her block last Monday morning and a car hit. She broke her leg. My cousin only informed this morning. We are going to the hospital now. Fortunately, she feels better. Otherwise, my cousin would regret later. He should have called us immediately. I'm glad to hear that your aunt is feeling better, Cindy. Thank you, Mabel. Tell me more about the cruise tomorrow. Maybe we'll also go on a cruise sometime. Sure. See you tomorrow. Did you notice the mistakes that Cindy made? Cindy had a problem with verbs. Instead of saying, did you enjoy yourself? Cindy said, did you enjoy? And instead of saying, did your husband and son like it? Cindy said, did your husband and son like? Verbs are words that indicate physical actions and behavior, mental actions and states and feelings. Some common examples of verbs are run, kick, eat, explode, shout, say, think, yawn, investigate, calculate, drink, build, know, breathe. Well, I'm sure that you will have noticed that these words have very different meanings. That's partly because we are looking at them as individual lexical items, as vocabulary. But if we look at them grammatically in sentences, we start to see that they work differently. For example, compare the verbs eat and sink in the following sentences. Last night, I ate two bowls of laksa. At 2 a.m., the ship sank. Simply put, after the verb ate, we have a strong expectation of hearing something next, whereas after the verb sank, we do not. In grammar, we say that the difference between these verbs is that eat is a transitive verb, whereas sink is not. Verbs can be either transitive or intransitive. A transitive verb describes an action which relates to another person or thing. There must be some reference to the other person or thing when we use a transitive verb. For example, if we use the verb kick, in order to make sense, we need to know who kicked, the subject of the action, and who or what was kicked, the object of the action. A sentence containing a transitive verb has a subject, a noun, a pronoun, or a noun phrase, which usually comes before the verb, this is followed by the verb itself, and then at least one object, a noun or pronoun or noun phrase after the verb. Let's hear an example. Take a moment to identify the verb, the subject, and the object. Mabel greeted Cindy. So, were you right? Mabel in this sentence is the subject of the verb greeted, and Cindy is the object the person who Mabel greeted. An intransitive verb describes an action that does not always need a reference to another person or thing to be complete. A sentence containing an intransitive verb has a subject, a noun, a pronoun, or noun phrase, and the verb, but no object. Here are some examples. The lion roared. The plane took off. The teacher sighed. The pupil yawned. Mabel smiled and Cindy laughed. 
But how do I know if a verb is transitive or intransitive? Well, a good way to check is to look up the verb in a good language learner's dictionary of English. The dictionary will indicate the verb's transitivity using a symbol after the headword. For example, the letter T in brackets after the headword tells you that the verb is transitive. Likewise, the letter I in brackets after the headword tells you the verb is intransitive. Let's listen to Cindy and Mabel one more time. This time, you will hear that Cindy has overcome her problem with verbs. Hello, Mabel. How was the cruise? Did you enjoy it? Yes, we had a good time on the cruise. Thank you. Good for you. Did your husband and son like the cruise? Yes, we all loved it. The food was great. The cabins were comfortable. Yes, it was fun. We met some interesting people there too. And my son made some new friends. Well, how is the family? We are all right, but I'm worried about my aunt. She's in hospital. Why? What happened? Well, she was crossing the road near her block last Monday morning and a car hit her. She broke her leg. My cousin only informed us this morning. We are going to the hospital now. Fortunately, she feels better. Otherwise, my cousin would regret the matter later. He should have called us immediately. I'm glad to hear that your aunt is feeling better, Cindy. Thank you, Mabel. Tell me more about the cruise tomorrow. Maybe we'll also go on a cruise sometime. Sure. See you tomorrow. The Grammar Matters podcast series is brought to you by the English Language Institute of Singapore. We would like to thank the Regional Language Centre of the Southeast Asia Ministers of Education Organisation for allowing the use of material from their Grammar Matters publication. To find out more about the Ellis podcast, visit go.gov.sg forward slash ELIS podcast. Thank you for listening.